Scott's essay is on the importance of movement. It's quite a long essay and it hasn't been done under timed conditions. This is one thing to think about because you need to get used to writing short, concise paragraphs. In an exam, you've got about 34 minutes to spend on the essay. And that includes planning it. So try to go for quality rather than quantity. Before we begin, let's remind ourselves of some basics. Number one, if you don't answer the question, you're not actually going to get the marks. It doesn't matter how amazing the biology is. It doesn't matter how, many, how detailed it is. If you do not answer about the importance of whatever's being asked, you're not going to move further than five as your top mark. And as we said in essay one and essay two, no introduction or conclusion is needed. We need to go straight into A-level content to show that you've been doing A-level biology and you're not just a good GCSE student. With that in mind, every sentence needs to be loaded with A-level content. No sentence should represent one that a GCSE student could have written. And that's why I'm crossing off this first sentence here, because that could have easily been written by a GCSE student. It is absolutely fine to move into this essay starting with enzymes are globular proteins. In that sentence, talking about globular proteins and lowering of activation energy, we're straight into A-level content. And that's where our essay should begin. The student then describes and explains the importance of enzymes using A-level subject-specific vocabulary. The student then relates movement to the idea of enzymes, the idea that the active site moves by changing shape. Explaining that idea further, the student then talks about without that shape change, we wouldn't get the substrate binding to enzymes. Therefore, any activation energy would be too high for metabolic reactions to occur. I'm glad to see that the student has used the idea of what would happen without this happening to talk about the importance as opposed to just talking about the role. So, so far, so good. The student has used a lot of A-level terminology. There's very little irrelevant detail. They've talked about the importance and not the role. My only criticism would be, is this the best example of movement? Has the student thoroughly planned her essay? With uh, topics such as muscle contraction and the movement of water against gravity through the xylem, there are lots and lots of perhaps better examples out there, but let's see what the essay brings. In this second paragraph, which is way, way too long for a second part of the specification, remember you've got to do four, um, there's a lot of information here which doesn't actually relate to the question, so could be deemed irrelevant. Reminding ourselves of the marking rubric, you'll see there in the bracket one to five, the last sentence says, may contain... Um, a large number of errors or irrelevant topics. So if you include a lot of irrelevance on top of a fabulous essay, you can still limit yourself according to the marking rubric. Pause the video for a moment while you take a read through the second paragraph, which of course, remember here, I've split it up into several just for ease of reading. Now I can see here that the student has tried to link this paragraph to the last paragraph. The last paragraph spoke about enzymes and they've started this one talking about enzymes and then switched it on to talking about DNA. You do not have to do this. Since the first release of their marking rubric, AQA have clarified what they have meant by, um, if you look in the 11 to 15 bracket, it says response mostly deals with suitable topics but they are not interrelated. This infers that they want the topics to be interrelated as does what it says in the top of the bracket 16 to 20, where it says response links several topics to the theme of the question to form a series of interrelated points. AQA have since published a commentary on their mark scheme, and in fact, all they want is four distinct topics. They don't need to follow on from each other. All they do need to do is each one needs to relate to the question. So don't waste time trying to make one paragraph flow from the next. There are no marks for this and you'll waste time. As we move on we can see that the second part of this paragraph could have been our entry point. It talks about each strand acts as a template for the movement of free nucleotides to their specific base pair by hydrogen bonding. So we've got movement in there. DNA polymerase joins with free nucleotides 
by phosphodiester bonds in a series of condensation reactions to complete the two DNA strands. The movement, good to keep a focus on the essay title, of free nucleotides allows semi-conservative replication of DNA to take place and hence nuclear division, allowing for the progression of cell division for growth and repair. Both of these paragraphs aren't great for talking about movement. There are better examples. However, now the student does go on to try and explain a little bit more. The absence of DNA replication results in daughter cells having incomplete genetic information after mitosis. So it only loosely links to the idea of movement. If we move to the second part, DNA helicase act on a specific region of DNA molecule to reveal the nucleotide bases on the template strand, allowing free nucleotides to bend to their complementary bases. Okay, here we go. RNA polymerase moves along and joins these free nucleotides to form the pre-RNA molecule, which is then spliced as it leaves through nuclear pores. There's a lot of information here, and I'm not sure that anyone would be able to write this under exam conditions. When practicing your essay, try and stick to timed conditions and also, this, uh, you know, how many paragraphs smacks of somebody who knows a lot about this topic, but then they're just trying to tenuously link it to the essay title. This next paragraph, in contrast, is around the right length. However, there isn't much of an uplift to A-level, and I question whether a good GCSE student would have been able to write this paragraph. It also lacks a level of detail. It says the movement of both lipid and water-soluble particles across cell surface membranes is vital for many processes such as generation of nerve impulses, absorption of digestion products in the bloodstream and exchange of gases. I think it would be much better to go into more detail about these pro uh, processes uh, and then talk about what would happen if, for instance, we didn't absorb glucose or if ions weren't able to cross the cell membrane and generate nerve impulses. Pause the video and take a moment to read this final paragraph of the essay. It's about the right length. It clearly contains A-level content and terminology. And the student has talked about what would happen if we didn't have these defence systems. So she's talked about the importance of and not just the role of. However, with this essay, I think that the student should have spent a little bit more time planning her topics more effectively. There's a whole host of topics right across the specification that you could have chosen. And remember, you are trying to choose them right across the specification to make sure you don't end up in the same subsection. If you can do that, you only need to write four topics. The reason why they tell you to write five or six is just in case two of them end up in the same subsection. For instance, you could have easily written about enzymes twice in that essay. Also, don't forget about plants, don't forget about insects, don't forget about movement um, across the gills. So remember to mark this essay. What we do is we start off with the lowest band, we see if it meets that criteria, and then we move up through it. I'm resting on the 16 to 20 bracket. We can see that several topics are linked to the main, main theme of the question and that the biology is clearly explained. In fact, a little bit too much of anything. The biology is definitely A-level content, and it's detailed, and it uses correct terminology. And perhaps we would say that there was some slight irrelevance in there which did detract from the overall quality of the answer. So I'd say it would gain about 17 marks out of the 25. To improve this, the students should have spent more time planning. They could have done a mind map, they could have thought about eight different topics and then from the eight different topics thought about how each one is in a different place in the specification, number one, but also how easy it is to talk about the importance of that particular topic within the specification. Writing about moving water from root hair cells to the palisades and cells in leaves or writing about Moving blood around the body has got to be a lot easier than some of the topics that this student chose. So when you're doing your plan, plan more and then delete in terms of 
is easy to enter this part of the specification and write about it at A level level, i.e. beyond GCSE. And also, how easy is it to talk about the importance of that particular mechanism, be it movement or whatever.